Greetings and welcome to another Barandar Streams. Barandar here, and today we are back in the world of Battletech. I want to take an opportunity to re-record or make a fresh video as my last one didn't have great audio. Uh, I have now switched over to a new microphone. Uh, and things should be much better on the sound end. So we're going to go over a little bit of everything for this game. Tips, tricks, mech builds, and, and then we'll get into a little combat afterwards. So, um, granted I am through the game. Uh, I have all the expansions in here. Uh, everything's been maxed out, including my reputation. Um, so this is something you'll be looking at a little further down the line. If you are starting the game, your first ship will be the Leopard, which will be a uh, much smaller dropship that you have to function in after the tutorial. Uh, the tutorial will set you up, give you a mech, uh, and get you rolling into the storyline with the Arana restoration and what's going on uh, in the story itself, in the world of Battletech. Once you have reached the Leopard, you will be in charge of a group of mech warriors um, and you'll have the opportunity to take different contracts around uh, the different galaxies and places that you visit the first thing you're going to learn is that money is very scarce to start so let me look at the finances situation here each month you're going to get a financial statement and you'll be able to contribute a certain amount of money to your team uh, to increase their morale effects. The morale effects are, they give you points throughout the game, uh, throughout the missions. And when you get those points per round of battle, you are able to use certain special skills if your pilots have them unlocked throughout the game. So the more money you put into this number here, the more plus you're going to get on your morale up to a certain point when it maxes out of 50. So early on, you're going to want to, you don't want to put this in the minuses. You probably don't want to put it in the plus because you're not going to be able to afford much. So try to keep it in the middle somewhere, plus zero, uh, as much as you can. And you have to make sure that each month you're at least making what you're spending. So the monthly totals here combined, uh, you know, obviously for my point in the game is going to be much higher. So you'll be in the hundreds of thousands. Um, but this also includes how many mechs you have on hand, uh, your med bays, um, and so on, and repairs and whatnot. So you have to be careful early on in the game to not get too frivolous buying mechs and buying supplies and getting yourself... Uh, too many uh, mech pilots uh, you don't need that many at the beginning of the game I actually ran this entire game with the original starting mech warriors and then I got to the very end and found out that I need to drop two lances on the last battle which means I needed at least eight mech pilots uh, and I believe at the time I only had about five so I have my pilot to start with um, behemoth uh, Decker was there, Glitch was there, and I believe Medusa uh, was my early first team. And then uh, I had to go back and train up another team and max everybody up so that I could get on with the game and finish it. Now, your mech warriors, each one, will have the same access to the same skill uh, sets. So there's gunnery, piloting, guts, and tactics. Uh, each category deals with different effects on the battlefield. You're going to want to decide early on your pilot's um, roles within your uh, lance is what they call a, a, a drop of mech. So when they drop a, a line of mechs, four mechs into a battlefield, it, it's considered a lance as the plural term for it so when you do drop in your lance you need to make sure that each person has their own specific job to do now you can see that my pilots can do anything they're all maxed out on all skills however the mechs that they're in have specific roles you can run with mechs that are 
generally set up so that they can do a little bit of everything. But you'll be more effective in battle if you have mechs that do specific jobs. Um, I have a, a heavy hitter mech. I have an all-purpose mech. I have a scout mech. And I have a missile boat that just deals with missiles and, uh, and long range. So depending on how you want to roll, what type of mechs you're using, you're going to want to consider some of these skills early on in the game. Now... You also need to keep in mind there are a few different types of weapons w uh, that you can put on your mechs, okay? There, there will be ballistic fire weapons, there'll be missile fire weapons, there'll be laser fire weapons. And then there'll be some miscellaneous ones, gatling guns, flamethrowers, all kinds of different things. But the, the main ones you're going to be dealing with are, are ballistics, lasers, and missiles. So the if you want to be using ballistics and ballistics are inaccurate after the more shots you take you have a, a recoil penalty um, so your if you're gonna have somebody dealing more with ballistics you might want to focus them more on guts and tactics um, tactics no matter what getting the cold shot mastery is key to life uh, in my book um, and as many of these benefits that you can max out is what you're going to need. Each character can learn a special skill in two categories, and then one category can go to the final, the ace skill that they can get. So depending on, and these are actual abilities that they're going to be able to do within a, um, a battle situation. So, for example, this is a sensor lock ability, which allows you to lock someone that you really can't see uh, from a distance so that he becomes visible um, and he gets uh, impaired sensors. So it's a little harder for him to hit, but you can also target him from a distance. So this is a type of skill that you want to have on your scout. Your scout is it, it would be almost useless without a without a sense of lock ability um, as far as the way I play the game goes. So I, I would need this uh, key. The uh, sure footing is another good one. Um, you have when you get hit and when your mech gets slammed uh, with damage, it's going to go through and hit the armor and the parts, but it also creates what's called an unsteady threshold where your mech will uh, wobble and has a chance to fall if it takes too much damage on its stability. Um, you know, the mech's standing up and it's it's very heavy, so it depends on your increasing your unsteady threshold, increasing your overheat threshold, uh, as well as important. If you fire your weapons, it creates a certain amount of heat on your mech. If your mech overheats, it won't be able to fire or move. Uh, which effectively leaves you dead on the battlefield until your cooldown process uh, continues. And you can sink that heat uh, more and more as the game progresses, depending on your items that you gain uh, within the game. Um, not to mention the uh, you know minimum range reductions and things of that nature, max sprint. Everything is useful within the game. Uh, for my main character, I stuck with the multi-target which um, I actually like for my guy because I have weapons that I could target multiple different uh, people. I would say that multi-target is an absolute key for a missile boat because oft times if you have enough uh, missiles or you're hitting heavy, you're going to want to split up your shots. Um, it's not always about taking out a mech on the battlefield in one shot. Um, mechs are designed, especially the heavier ones, to withstand damage. So you need to strip armor, you need to destabilize, and then move in for the kills. Uh, the game is not designed for you to just blitz everything straight on. Um, you need to use some, some tactics with, uh, with how you approach things on the battlefield. Breaching Shot is another good one because it breaks through cover and uh, guarded effects. Um, will allow you to hit things but it only works for the first shot uh, it's, a, it's a single weapon shot only that it counts for um, there are other skills that allow you to um, move 
after shooting like this one here, which in retrospect, I probably would have skipped that. Um, it didn't work out as much as well as I thought it would have for most of my cat uh, for most of my characters. Um, the this is probably the best skill that you can get in the long run. Uh, the master tactician gives you a plus one initiative. As you increase max in weight, your initiative will decrease. Okay, so whereas you might be starting out with an initiative of like six or seven and your lighter mechs will move faster than heavier mechs obviously because they are lighter and increasing your initiative will allow your heavy mechs to move a little bit faster when you're in another battle with another heavy mech or an assault mech um, i do only have this on my uh, scout character uh, because i need him moving first to see the opponents uh, at a distance however in retrospect, I probably would have put this on some more characters uh, had I learned this a little earlier in the game. But that is pretty much the basics of your um, team, how it goes with them. Um, you will have their stats, uh, how many injuries, ejections, and whatnot that you've taken throughout. As you can see, none of my guys have ever had an ejection. Uh, I've never had to abandon a sh uh, mech within the game. So if you play carefully, um, you can do it. It's not as hard. All right, so next we are going to move over to your contracts. Okay. Throughout the game, you're going to be able to pick up these contracts. Uh, contracts are how you're going to make your cash uh, in which to pay for everything in the game. You are going to find that certain mechs are better at certain missions. So, for example, when you have missions like when you have to intercept um, a, a caravan that's moving on the road, you're, you're going to be inserted, you're going to have to move to a choke point, and then you're going to have to eliminate the targets before they make it to an extraction zone. And they will be starting to move when you start to move. And the heavier your mechs, the harder it is going to be to get to those areas. And their vehicles move fast. And you're going to wind up in a lot of situations blitzing into a situation blind and not being prepared. So I try to avoid some of those types of missions. Uh, defend missions are another one. They can be good or bad because... They tend to spawn in other lances to assault you from right side, then the left side, then the front side, then the back side. And if you split up your four mechs to try to defend all areas, you're going to have to take a turn or two just to get the mech in position to help defend. And then you get hit again, and it can get annoying. So you're going to have to play around depending on your mech setup and how you like to play and decide on your missions early on it's better to stick with the assassinates or uh, destroy base or, or things of that nature where you don't have to defend and chase so much um, however it's up to you what you enjoy playing in the game either way what you're going to find out is the pay versus the salvage is the first thing you find out so when you choose to take a mission, when you go into negotiate, you're going to have a slider here. You can increase your payment a little bit more, which decreases your salvage range. You can also work more for reputation. If you want to drop down, you can increase your reputation uh, with them instead of taking more things. So depending on how you want to play, you'll get different statistics. Early on, salvage is important because it gives you chassis parts where you can build new mechs plus weapons to arm your mechs and it will also give you more money uh, with which to pay your monthly bills so you have to find a balance between the two don't worry so much about reputations as you go the main money that you're going to gain early on in the game comes from the main quests with the arano restoration they're going to give you a hefty amount of money and they're going to move you along so try to get your monthly together and then move on with the arano restoration missions as soon as you can this will increase your mechs. This will move you on to eventually getting a hold of the Argo, which is your next dropship and the ship that you're going to run for the rest of the game. Now, the Argo itself has uh, is massive. It um, 
can pretty much um, let me put up the ship upgrades. So here's the ship upgrades for it. So you have power, structure, drive, habitats, mech bays, repairs, training modules, med bays. You have a whole bunch of recreational bays. Uh, and you can upgrade these at your leisure throughout the game. When you get a little extra money, you should put something into these areas here. Now, although your med bays are very important and your mech bays are very important, what happens is when you travel from location to location, you have a percent chance to run into a event. And the events can be good or bad for your team, depending on how you choose to, to respond. So you oftentimes can wind up with people getting injured or winding up in the med bay for a time, and it will take you right out of a mech uh, when you need to drop a lance to do a job. So you want to work a little bit on your power and your structure, and then your drive a little bit. But power and structure first. These are going to prevent some of those events when they pop up. And then your med bay is also important. And the combat in this game is a lot like the XCOM games. And especially the new ones, the uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown series. And same thing in that game. Your goal, you want to keep your pilots out of the med bays as much as possible. Because you may have a mech, but if you ain't got somebody to pilot, that mech is not going anywhere. And the more mechs, mech bays you have, the more mechs you can hold. The more mechs you have, the more money you're paying per month. So early on, you want to keep your team small and your mechs focused. Okay. And then um, the recreational um, upgrades are mostly going to help with different events throughout the game uh, as they pop up from time to time. The training modules will give your pilots extra skill points if they're not out on the battlefield uh, with you. They'll still gain some points per month, which is useful. But these are more cosmetic to me than anything else. Once your power, your structure, your drives handle, how fast you go from location to location, um, and your your habitats your most of these things are just not that necessary so you can work on them later on in the game all right you had, do have a star map the star map is absolutely massive and you're never going to run out of things to do okay i'm well over 300 hours in the game and as you can see i still have a ton of places i can go uh things to do um when you you follow the, follow the missions, you know, follow the storyline, but once you get through the story or once you're a little more off on your own, you can pick where you want to go to uh, and travel there. It'll give you a cost and a time, depending on your engines, when you're going to get there. It'll tell you a little bit about the worlds that you're going to, uh, so you can make a decision on your battlefields. Battlefields matter. You're going you're gonna to be fighting in, in cold areas, hot areas, jungle areas, city areas, and each one has different effects on your mechs and how much heat they uh, put out when they actually work on them, when they shoot on the battlefield. Um, your finances and your reputation are not something, like the reputation is not something you really need to worry about throughout the game uh, unless you ally with a faction, in which case you pick up their enemies and whatnot. Your finances are monthly, so as long as you're making back what you're putting out at least per month, you'll move along until you get some of the better things. Uh, I've talked about the ship upgrades, we've talked about the mech warriors, uh, your memorial walls in case you ever lose a mech warrior, the name will get put up here. I haven't had the pleasure, so no big deal. Um, you can hire more mechs, uh, mech warriors rather, throughout the game. Uh, they will pop up here with the basic skills, some of them will have some more advanced skills available to you, uh, depending on what is given uh, throughout the game and you can hire them at your leisure but remember the more mechs you have the more money it costs uh, early on you want to have at least four mech warriors so you can drop a full lance and at least one more mech warrior to rotate out for anybody who gets injured uh, eventually you're going to need at least eight warriors in order to finish the game uh, at some point although why I don't know because I other than that mission I don't believe I even needed that many mechs uh, throughout the game. But, and then next we're going to go into talking about the mechs themselves. Now, when you begin the game, you're going to be on some medium mechs here. Um, you start... 
with a blackjack here. This is a blackjack will be the first thing you start with. It's mostly a beam machine. It's got a lot of lasers on it. Uh, has a couple of ballistics, but they're going to be pretty much useless to you at the beginning of the game. You're not going to hit very much. They're going to going to miss a lot. Um, I believe you also get a shadow hawk on one character. Um, not a hunchback. Maybe a vindicator and a spider. I can't remember a cicada. I I, I, I can't remember. But um, most of these, mostly early on, you're going to be relying on beam weapons. Beam weapons have uh, a guaranteed damage shot, and they don't miss as much as ballistics do. However, later on in the game, ballistics become a little better than you'd expect. Um, Short-range weapons I don't support because I don't need mechs getting that close to me. Uh, the melee combat is nice, but it's... Uh, it can be devastating if your mech is built for it uh, and has a lot of and is heavier and built for that but early on in the game you're going to want to be focusing on shooting your targets from behind and hitting their vulnerable spots which are their legs uh, and their backs and things of that nature so you're going to be just wanting to hang on between your light and your medium mechs you're going to have to make your decisions uh, light mech is probably better for a scout and your medium mechs are probably going to be your all-purpose mechs. Uh, some of them will have a little more weaponry, depending on how you want to build them. But your ultimate goal is to start moving up to heavy, and then into the assault mechs, which is where all the fun begins. Um, the heavier the mech, the more the weapons, the slower it moves, the, the less the initiative rating goes down. So, you know, your, your earlier mechs, you know, you, they're going to have a... Initiative rating 4, as you can see here, 4, 4, 4. Uh, when you get up into the Assault Mech range, you're down to a 1. So that's why that skill increasing it to a 2 actually makes you go before almost every other um, Assault Mech on the board. And you'll be at least moving with the Heavy Mechs, uh, which makes a difference. All right. So each one of your bays can hold um, up to 6 Mechs. And, of course, there's maintenance to maintain all these mechs here. So this is my first and main lance that I always drop. This would be my second lance uh, in case I need it. And a couple extra pieces. Once I upgrade, I drop it down to bay 3, and then eventually I'll retire them. Um, but at this point, with the amount of funding that I have coming in, it really doesn't matter if I leave them all out or not. Um, you can put them in the storage. Uh, they get stripped of all their weapons, which go back into your inventory. And if you have a full one, it will sit here and you can always ready it anytime you want. Or you can sell it for money. Throughout the game, once you destroy mechs uh, in battle and certain stores that you come across, you'll be able to buy chassis parts. Chassis parts will, once you get a certain amount of them, three together, you'll have a full mech and you'll be able to equip it and ready it and put it on the battlefield for fighting. So depending on how you want to build them and what you find within the game is what you're going to have to work with. And you're going to have to decide on what you like to play with depending on your combat styles within the game. Um, early on, just past lasers, you're going to be want to looking you're going to be wanting to look at missiles. Missiles are indirect fire but good range and they hit clusters. Uh, they also do some serious damage too. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some of my weapons here. So ballistic weapons, these are fairly good damage. Um, the stability is how much damage they're going to knock out of the stability rating of the mech once it gets hit. So these are going to be a pretty indirect fire, but later on down the road, the damage gets extreme and the stability damage goes up pretty good uh, with actually minimal heat drain, which is the problem with lasers, which have high heat drain, but guaranteed damage for the most part. Uh, but they also do no stability damage. They will not rock a boat. Uh, the PPCs will a little bit, and they also mess up targeting, um, but they're also quite heavy to put on to a mech uh, in the long run. They're going to eat up more space and power than you want. So it's hit or miss with PPCs, whether you like them. Uh, the snub PPCs fire in clusters, and they're all right as well. 
missiles are where all the fun is. Um, the damage, the ability damage versus heat versus firing is absolutely where you want to be playing. Um, the bigger the missiles, the better. Usually the uh, the short range missiles, the SRMs, uh, usually an SRM six or four, are pretty good early on in the game. Uh, especially if you can get the plus plus varieties, these are um, a little bit better weapons that you're going to find throughout the game, which will do a little bonus to your damage or stability damage or criticals or whatever. They all have different variables that you can pick them up as you go. Uh, but the base variant does good damage, good stability. The heat's not too bad. The only issue is you're going to need ammunition. So you're going to have to keep a box of ammo on you, and you will have limited shots. Same thing with your ballistics. You have limited shots. You Lasers will be unlimited. But there's the trade-off. Uh, there's always a trade-off. The shorter-range weapons can be dangerous if you have enough of them. And if you're in the right spot at short range. So, again, depending on your play style, if you like quick strikes, you like light mechs, you like to move in and assault and get out, this might be something a little more along the lines that you want to go for. Um, but I don't like to be within 90 meters if I don't have to of anything in this game. So, once you have your mechs, you're going to be able to go into your refit screen and upgrade them so for example this is my main mech that i'm running with right now the atlas 2 um obviously this is an assault mech this is an advanced one but we're gonna we're just opening this up so you can see the basic idea so on your mech you're gonna have your legs your arms your torso your head and your ct which is your center torso all right your red number here is your structure, which is what this thing can hold, all right? This this here is your armor. This is your structure. Once the structure is broken, then the piece will be blown off, or in the case of a center torso, the mech gets cut in half. Um, but you would need to strip down the armor before you reach the structure, before you can assault that. So the more important pieces such as your center torso and your right and left torso will have uh, much heavier armor ratings than your uh, appendages is the word I'm looking for uh, than your arms and your legs all right you can function without your arms in this game provided you have other weapons either on your torsos or uh, in the head uh, compartment or on your CT or whatever uh, but your mech will not function without the legs once you lose both legs the mech is done and you're out of out of combat so you do want to keep your legs relatively protected however they don't generally get targeted that easily in the game unless you're aiming for them uh, and called shots are the easiest thing to do early on in the game especially at, at a smaller target like a leg you have a better shot at a uh, torso or hitting something um, on the arms uh, earlier on headshots don't even bother headshot you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning outside in real life than you will be making a headshot in this game all right it's 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 going to happen from time to time you're going to get hit you're going to get hit you're going to hit somebody it'll be a miracle if you ever do it but uh it's just the percent the percentages on on such a small target are not very high so you want to be looking at several legs hitting the back uh, as you can see this is forward and rear armor so as you can see the rear armor max is half of what the forward armor is so if you could get behind the mech and get an alpha strike uh, an alpha strike consists of you firing everything you have at once on a target you can devastate them from the rear um, later on when you are into heavy mechs and assault mechs you're not going to be able to flank your opponents like that and get behind them all the time it's going to be very difficult to do so you have another target which is the center torso and even though that's the meatiest thing in the game we're going to show you how to break through that in one shot one volley um, as far as your firepower versus heat efficiency goes, uh, let me explain it this way. Your, every weapon you fire 
as you can see this um, has a heat of 25 so when this weapon fires it's going to generate 25 heat and this side's going to generate 25 heat and whatever else i'm going to fire in it's going to add it all together and that's going to be how much heat this thing is going to need to fire all that and there's a threshold that you go to all right so that that deals with your heat efficiency so as you can see this um this mech can shut down at 110 heat so once my heat builds up to 110 or more that's when you go into a shutdown till your mech cools off after a couple of turns all right this mech also sinks almost 100 heat per turn which means i can regenerate that i i i reduce that amount off of what i'm firing so my alpha strike only costs 125 to fire everything i got on this in one shot and a hundred of it is negated so i'm only picking up 25 heat on a max firing each round and i don't shut down to 110 with this max so i can fire consecutively a lot uh, but you don't always fire every single round there's going to be rounds where you're just moving uh, so this atlas doesn't basically generate any heat at all for the battles uh, and that's what you're looking for you're looking for to be able to sink at least a good portion of what your alpha strike is uh, and in order to do that sometimes you're going to need to learn to turn on and turn off weapons all right so during battle you will you, it might be nice to, to have all this i have two medium pulse lasers two extended range a gauss rifle two missiles but if you keep firing all this every single round eventually your heat's going to burn you out so there are times when you need to turn off maybe i'll fire the gauss rifle in the two extended ranges and you know i won't fire the medium pulse lasers you know that saves you an extra 20 or 40 heat and puts me under my heat heat threshold so i don't even generate any on a battle all right your movement's going to increase or decrease depending on your mech size uh, heavier mechs are going to move slower so i wouldn't worry too much about that um, having jump jets is useful to get up to high areas i do recommend putting at least a couple on them if you can afford the weight uh, the tonnage which we'll talk about in a little bit but your jump jets are going to get you up to higher areas on the map that you're going to need to get to for better shots uh, for better shot angles depending on how you do it. your your average range is uh, comprised of your weapons um, so your optimal range is to be able to hit with everything so around 282 meters this thing can fire with a max range of 660 but i only have a few weapons that can reach that type of range uh, my gauss rifle can reach that um, and uh, my extended ranges can get pretty close to it but uh, your range is going to fluctuate depending on the type of mech you're running your durability is your armor and your full structure uh, however your your structure is not combined and neither is your armor when you're on the battlefield so it's going to bullets and, and ammo and, and uh, lasers rather and missiles are all going to hit certain parts of your mech and it's going to wear down pieces at a time uh, until it blows certain pieces off or it takes down areas and you also remember once your armor is gone it can hit the components on the actual mech so if my left torso gets destroyed then all this ammunition can get hit and explode and blow up and damage and take out the entire mech itself so sometimes it's a better tactic to aim for the ammo or the legs rather than shooting off an arm or something uh, unless they have a particular weapon on there you'd rather not deal with then taking out an arm might be a good idea so you have to adjust your tactics um, your melee strength of your mech has to deal with how much damage you can do in, in a, with a shot depending on how heavy it is and if there's any uh, upgrades that you have there are things you can put on your mech to reinforce the arms and the legs and whatnot so that you can do all these melee attacks uh, again melee damages your mech too you're going to damage them but you're going to damage your own mech especially with the dfa which stands for death from above this is a leaping attack that you can do from a, a height onto another mech 
but it damages the legs of your mech. And if your legs are low, you're going to kill yourself as well. So although you do fantastic damage, you have to make sure that your mech is built that way or avoid melee combat unless it's a kill shot. If you can get in and finish them off, you, then maybe it's a good idea. But it, again, depends on how you want to play. All right. Um, your ammo, your equipment, and your weapons, everything on here goes in certain spots and weighs a certain amount. All right. What can go where depends on these little pins. Okay, so you have, um, they call them hard points on this. So on this hard point, you're able to place up to two lasers and or a support weapon, which is one of those short range weapons. Uh, as you can see, I can fit two beams here. I can fit, um, you know, two ballistic hard points here. I got two missile hard points here. So depending on how you like to play, this up here will show you your overall uh combat setup and then this is your jump jet so like i could fit a total of three jump jets on here i could put one on each leg and one on the center torso uh, which would be maximum that i could hold um, i could hold a maximum of uh, six beam weapons two ballistic weapons and so on and so forth but the mech itself has an overall tonnage as you can see is 100 tons and each piece that you put on here weighs a certain amount so for example the laser is five tons the Gauss rifle is 15 tons, and then the Gauss rifle also has ammunition that needs to be included, which is a ton of piece. And then these heat sinks to drop the heat down are also a ton, and the heat bank weighs, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, as you build up and add on pieces, your tonnage is going to go up to its maximum until it can't go anymore. And unfortunately, you also have your armor to consider because armor weighs. So this is why you have to adjust your armor ratings in order to put some bigger pieces on your mech sometimes. Um, without taking away the important areas too much, like your center torso, your head should always be maxed. End of story. Uh, and everything else you want to keep as high as you can. I don't worry so much about the rear of my mechs very rarely can anything get behind me unless i make a bad move or i put myself out in the middle of the battlefield it's just not my play style so i don't worry too much about the rears or the legs uh, of most of my mechs um, i do worry about the components on the arms and so, such areas so if a component is particularly valuable like my gauss rifle is almost irreplaceable at this point um, I tend to keep that a little bit higher on the uh, armor rating so that I, it's easier for me to defend it because uh, once it goes, it gets destroyed. But you have the option. You could switch these items out and put them back at your leisure. As you can see, it'll knock down your tonnage ratings. Uh, it also costs time to change out um, components and put on new ones and remove ones and uh, increase decrease your armor only is instant but anything else is going to take a certain amount of time so depending on your mech bays you're going to have to wait a day or two and that's also going to decrease the amount of time you have to get to another mission and make more money so uh, try not to mess around too much too early uh, keep it basic keep it simple um, basic team until you get the Argo and you have a little bit more money under your control uh, per month and your funding is moving along then you can start messing around with the with the heavier mechs all right so this mech again is designed for a little bit of everything but this is my command mech so it kind of has to go out uh, cancel that out uh, wait actually confirm not saving all right next is this is my heavy hitter and i call it mecha godzilla this is probably the most devastating weapon i've put on the battlefield in this game so far the tonnage right off the bat is 100 tons uh so it's a full assault mech and it's got five ballistic hard points on it it also comes with a, a bsc system um, which increases my ballistic damage and my stability. Uh, plus, I also added a, um, a ballistic bonus increase of plus three on this. The reason for all of it is these UAC-20s, which are 
probably the most devastating thing I've seen in this entire game to date. And putting two on one mech makes this thing almost... A, a, it's a walking death machine, literally. Um, the damage, as you can see, 120, and you get two shots. Uh, that's 240. Firing two of these... I mean, you're, you're doing four or 500 points of damage in one volley. As you can see, the center torso, that would shred this right in half in one shot with a cold shot. So this is the future. This is the way the UAC-20s. Um, they're not easy to come across. Um, they're going to be hard to find eventually if you happen to get a hold of them. If you happen to get a hold of two, you can make something very devastating. Uh, a tag laser will increase damage. It doesn't do any damage, but it increases the next shot uh, from other weapons that hit it afterwards. Uh, and I have it built out for a little bit of lasers as well. But mostly this is just all heat, 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 heat sinking to get the heat efficiency right. All right, I only see, sink 48, but it only burns 113 on an alpha strike. And considering the power of these weapons you can pretty much fire both of these twice and then I believe I have to turn one off and still get one more shot before I have to lay off my weapons for a round um, and the lasers get turned on and off it doesn't really matter the lasers are there for fun uh, and range uh, and just in case uh, my heats you know gets a little too high but the UAC 20s is death incarnate if you can get them out there Otherwise, I keep them very well protected. As you can see, I maxed out the armor where I could because I don't have that much on this. Uh, just a couple of weapons, a lot of ammo, and it's all heat exchange um, for this. Uh, not too much on the legs so much, but this has held against four mechs on its own uh, and survived. So a very key item to have. Uh, I do recommend getting the cockpit mod uh, as best you can get. Uh, the plus plus gives you plus three injury resist when your mech takes damage your pilot will take damage and certain critical shots hits to the head will damage your pilot knock him out and put him in the hospital uh, and he's gonna have a bad day and so are you when that happens so the cockpit mod is a key item that you can have the only mech i don't use that on is my scout because i have a range finder on there which increases my um how far away I can track somebody uh, that I can't see. So uh, that's more important to me. But the cockpit mod should be on every single mech you own otherwise uh, to protect your mech uh, driver from damage like that. Um, as you can see, the firepower uh, off the chart, 586 max damage, which absolutely will destroy anything it hits if you focus your damage now the game is kind of based on spray damage so to offset that they give you a called shot uh, if a mech is on the ground and not moving you get an automatic called shot otherwise you can make a called shot if you have enough uh, resolve uh, which increases each turn depending on how much money you're paying your guys and whether they're destroying other mechs or not taking damage or surviving everything is all factors that go into it but when you have the amount, you can fire a called shot and pick where you want to shoot the target. Uh, and if you have somebody who's efficient with ballistic weapons, like the driver is of this web, of this machine, you can destroy things in one round. And it's a game changer, big time game changer. This, this changed uh, the entire ending of the game for me. I was able to really breeze through it. And then we're going to take a look at our missile boat next. This is um, this is a straight up missile boat. As you can see, it's um, can have a maximum of four missile hard points on it, but the armor might be higher than anything else I have. Uh, as you can see, the armor on this is higher than I believe any other mech I have on the battlefield. Um, but this is basically a missile boat. Uh, I did have so much extra tonnage to use. As you can see, I mean. It's maxed out, maxed out, maxed out, pretty almost maxed out, and these are even higher, you know. Uh, jump jets just to get to higher range, 
um, the, uh, the the missile accuracy increase for it, uh, the Cockman Mana standard. And then I just slapped on a bunch of long range missile launchers and a bunch of lasers for short range just in case. It's still devastating in short range. I mean, each one of these laser plus plus is doing 35 damage. So uh, anything comes in a mid range with this, it still can defend itself pretty hard, especially with the l missiles. But the range on these max 630, max 630, max 630. So this can pretty much hit across the map, which is basically I run this up the middle, park it in a tree, and just have fun shooting at anything else that my other three mechs uh, can't get to. This I'll use to strip armor off. This I'll use to damage uh, components um, from range uh, so that my other mechs can get in and just absolutely wipe things out. Uh, the heat bank is, is uh, pretty important for this, though. Although the heat drain is not too horrible, uh, I can only get a, a 30 heat sink in order to keep as much uh, missiles as I need on this boat and ammunition and everything. Um, however, it rarely ever overheats uh, unless I get into a, a laser battle with something. But my range is still pretty excellent uh, and it hits about the same minimum range as everything else. Movement again, it's a heavy mech. It's not going to move very fast, but it's uh, structure and melee are actually pretty good and the firepower is Still devastating. Uh, I mean almost 400 damage uh, If I'm at short range with something so this would be my missile boat doesn't do much But just blast things at a distance for me And next we're going to take a look at our last mech, which is the scout mech All right, this is the bull shark. This is more of a special mech that I found later on in the game um, I was using I believe a Highlander or a Battle master one of the two I was using for a while um, as it was a Medium class assault mech. It was a little faster. So I might have had a an initiative of three with that plus one on there instead of uh, two uh, so I was moving a little better uh, with it. However, moving up to the bull shark, this thing is actually really good. Uh, and I'm becoming a big fan. All right, and the last one here. This comes with a thumper cannon, which uh, can blast anything in a large radius from across the map. Um, it's very good against vehicles, which is what I keep it on the side for. Uh, this is actually how the mech, I believe, was handed to me, except for the rangefinder. This mech, this is how I got it. I probably put the UAC-5s on here myself, but I believe the, LB, uh, the LB-10Xs were here already. Uh, and we're going to go over, this is more of a ballistic animal uh, to check out here. I do have extended range medium lasers just to pick up my range. But what this mech does is it goes out first. So this is my scout mech. I move it as far forward as possible. I get a plus 120 meter view range with this rangefinder on here. So my guy can see even further down than anything else I have. Plus he has that ability that we talked about earlier to allow him to sense a lock an opponent, which allows my missile boat then to hit that target without being able to see it just because I'm in range of it. My UAC 5s, I found, have a max range of 540 meters, plus they're very small, uh, and the, uh, the recoil and tonnage is light, but the damage, 45 times 2 for both of these, uh, is actually devastating. And the LBX 10s are 88 damage, plus 40 stability damage. So these basically rip armor apart rip armor off targets from a distance where they can't get retaliated against because most mechs in the game are going to be outranged by this um, my average range here my optimal range is 300 meters and i can shoot at a total of 540 and i could pretty much hit with everything uh, at that range you know this is 540 this is 450 so you know anywhere up to 450 meters back i'm hitting with almost everything i have uh, on my on my arsenal until it comes into closer range 
uh, and the armor is pretty hefty on this thing too. The durability is is top notch. It's not as as thick as some of the other um, targets I have, and I had to remove the jump jets to my dissatisfaction. I wasn't able to add rather jump jets onto it. Uh, because I needed the space with this thumper cannon on here. I suppose if I took the thumper off, I could make some more work happen with it. But um, at this point, I wanted to play with something new, and it's actually kind of cool, uh, the thumper. So this would be my scout mech, and we're going to show you just how these things work in battle in a little while. Uh, as far as the other weapons go that you can place on it, it's really preference on how you want to do it. This is just an example of how I set mine up by roll and um, weapon. So this bull shark will range it. It will start stripping armor off the target as much as it can. As well, the missile boat, the crab will, here, the crab will fire missiles at it and strip armor and damage components for my Atlas and my Annihilator to move in and destroy it. The Atlas, I usually will hit the damaged targets with, and the Annihilator, I will hit the fresh targets with, as it can tear something in half in one shot. And that should cover everything there is to know about this game except for the actual battle which we are going to do next and welcome to the combat portion for those of you who made it through the first half of it i thank you very much there's a lot of information uh, to pass down in regards to this game. Uh, two other quick areas that I should make mention. One is the um, uh, black market. Okay, uh, you will have an opportunity to purchase the, the access to the black market at some point during the game. Uh, this all depends on, let me go to my reputations, this all depends on your reputation here with the local pirate organization. Okay, uh, I played my mech team more as a honorable mech warrior squad however you want to say it uh, but they were a little more on the honorable side so I stood against the pirates more than once and the Torians due to the storylines and where it took me but uh, because I am so loathed by the pirate organization when I do get offered access to the black market it usually costs me eight to ten million or more to just to join it uh, and then when you get there the black market does have a ton of great items uh, there's no doubt this is where you're gonna find the rare items and whatnot uh, and complete completely full 100% uh, mech this is a partial salvage this one is a full mech but as you can see the prices for me 253 million uh, for a Black Knight, which is, you know, a class lower than anything I'm running right now, is just ridiculous. So uh, I generally don't even bother with the Black Market. Uh, I grabbed it last time just to see if uh, there was anything interesting I could buy. But after this, I'm probably not going to be doing it again. If, uh, depending on how you play your game, if you play in a certain style uh, where this could be more beneficial to you, where you do better with the, I mean, as you can see, I'm a thousand percent price increase. So if your reputation was better with the local pirate organization, you stood against other factions, this would be more beneficial to you. As you can see, I mean, the weapons, I'll be 20 X's, ooh, uh, you know, things of that nature um, that you can purchase. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I might just snag one of these while I'm here. Uh, is there one more? There's one more. I'll take two. Excellent. And, yeah, I mean, they usually have very good items here for you uh, to purchase. Better than the regular system stores, which generally don't have much to go on, uh, depending on where they are. So that's optional. Uh, the other uh, thing I wanted to mention was your customized company option here. Um, it gives you a little mech painting board uh, where you can go and you can make your company logo. You can change your name, your crest, and you can change your coloring. Uh, and there's several different variations of how the stripings go and how it looks and whatnot. So uh, you can play with this around as much as you want. Uh, making your own different styles and whatnot uh, with the game. 
And that should cover just about everything, and we will go on to the combat. All right, so we have taken a trip here. Uh, let me get to my star map. Uh, these areas, by the way, that pulsate are flashpoints. Uh, that's an expansion pack that you can get that will add little mini storylines onto uh, your game. Uh, and they will pop up all over at different random points uh, and different events. And you can follow a short little story for a couple of missions. Uh, and it's a nice little addition. So as far as the expansion packs go, if you can get this game on sale with everything, get everything. Uh, all the expansions are worth it. I, I've had no problems with this game whatsoever. Um, so we've reached this area and we are going to look at the contracts here. And we're going to go with this one here. This is a, uh, a battle in the jungle. It's, uh, you know, uh, full difficulty. So... And we're going up against the Taurians, which I like. So we're going to negotiate this out. Since it is a very heavy lance, I'm going to take the salvage out of it. Uh, I don't need that much money. Um, but I'm going to take full salvage just in case something's good pops up. And we're going to roll with that. And then I will edit out my load time after my tonnage is set. Uh, we're running with the full squad, so it doesn't matter. And be back when we make landfall. And all right, we have reached the mission start point. So your missions are all pretty much going to start the same way. You're going to get dropped. Um, you're going to get a few pieces of information from Darius and anybody else that happens to be there. Uh, sometimes the enemy will taunt you. Um, what I like to do first is figure out where everything is going to be so this is your destroy enemy and so you can click on this and it'll zoom in on the area so this is where the enemy is expected to be however uh, 90 percent of the time they're going to have some kind of a backup is going to hit you as well so what i also like to do is look for this yellow line here okay this yellow line represents your border uh, as far as you can go on this map so in general if the border is far away like it is here you see how much meat there is there's a lot of land to work with over here uh, up in this corner so my guess is any kind of reinforcements are probably going to come from the left hand side while I'm over here on the right so if I try to flank this way I'm going to get caught in a pincer so my first thought is to head to the right side of this mountain here uh, and try to hit them from that direction to cut off any enemy units that might come in because you don't know they could come in anywhere they might not come at all we don't know so but either way once you get the layout of the land you know uh, water is going to help with your sinking um, trees are going to help with your you know defense uh, and height is going to give you better range so I always start out with my scout first since he has the larger um, range as far as the range finder on his cockpit goes plus he can sense a lock targets uh, so we're going to move him down as far as I can into the protective jungle. Now the cone is going to represent the direction you can face. Uh, a lot of times you can get away with not having to face uh, in a direction you don't want to if you have jump jets, uh, which I don't on this guy at the moment. So we're just going to move him down. Uh, I don't like to move all of my units at once, which you can kind of do. Uh, until I move a guy out all right this uh, border here that you can see the green the bluish greenish however you want to call it border this is that moves that is your range that you can detect an enemy in depending on how far you're going to move so when that gets over this plus area I will most likely say you see something unless something is moving towards me a little sooner than expected so uh, again, we're going to start moving downstream here and try to keep our eyes forward. And now that I'm sure that there's nothing immediately threatening my team, I can move the rest of my units a little quicker here. Sometimes you're going to get missions that are time sensitive um, where you're going to have to move a little quicker. You're going to have to do things in a certain amount of rounds. Uh, those can be very annoying and stressful depending on how fast your mechs are. Um, but sometimes you just got to get through it any way you can. 
Let's wait on the enemy's turn, and now we're back to me. All right, so now if there are any reinforcements on the board already, they are moving at the same time. There's a lot of times when you will accomplish a portion of a goal, like they might say take over the base and then defend it. So you might get there and take over the base, and then another dropship might land a lance uh, in some random direction for you to attack. Sometimes they're already on the map and moving towards you. Uh, you just don't know. So The little chevrons that you get next to your name after your move uh, over here represent um, your speed. So it, it, each one counts as a point of evasion. Uh, when somebody fires at you so the faster your mech is moving uh, or if it's sprinting then it's a little harder to hit the mech uh, than if it didn't have that on it so movement does help this is why the the faster mechs in the game can survive uh, because they can get stack up a lot of evasion where they're not going to get hit at all now my atlas i want to start moving them down so i'm going to go against my better judgment and jump them down into the water here Right, I got a feeling I'm gonna have to get over the top of this mountain anyway, or around. I'm gonna have to go down eventually to get to the other side. So, gonna start moving in that general direction now because I don't see too many places to get down without jump jets, and not all my guys have them on here. Uh, which is probably why they were trying to force me to go down over here, which I didn't want to do. And I'm also skirting the edge of the map here, so this is a little going to be a little tight any way you cut it. Uh, I'm going to move this one over here in the hopes that I can get down that slope there. Otherwise, I'm going to be in a little bit of trouble. There we go. All right, wait on the enemy turn and see what we're dealing with here. This is a bad approach. Uh, a lot of times you'll have a more straightforward approach, but I don't like getting forced to go in a certain direction. Move him up again. Hope that I can get something on scopes. Nothing there yet. I'm going to start moving my mech across the water now. Alright, so I got something finally on scopes up here. Oh, a hundred ton mech. Alright, so that's a big boy. Uh, and he has some height and range on me, so I don't like that. And I cannot move down this slope. I can jump jet it down there. Like I said, not everybody has jets on them right now. So this will become an issue if I have to go all the way back to the left again to get down there. Which it's actually starting to look like I might have to unless I could slip down over here. So... We're going to keep moving in this direction in hopes that I can. Otherwise, this is going to be a really short mission. On my way. All right, let's see what he does. It's an Annihilator. That's a big puppy dog. doesn't look like there's any way for me to get down from here, but I can at least hit him, which is what we're going to do, because the range is key for this weapon. Never a bad idea to start stripping off his armor. So it looks like I'm going to be in trouble here with my big mech. I'm going to have to start running her back in the other direction in order to get her where I need her to fight with tactical blunder but I didn't read the terrain properly so it happens you need to be prepared which is another reason why it's good to have jump jets so that you can get around these areas like this I'm certain there's a few more mechs but the more I can pick off quickly the better I don't necessarily like moving my mech open like this but I think with my range, I'll be all right. Ooh. 
Ooh, crit that AC-10. Beautiful, beautiful. The computer doesn't... Uh, the computer AIs, uh, or the computer mechs, however you want to put it, don't usually slap on as much armor on the mechs as you can do. So, generally speaking, they're a little easier to cut through than anything that you can put on the map. But... You're still dealing with some very deadly max out here when they're of this tonnage. So, missile boat once again, you see I got more than enough range and ammo to light these guys up all day and plus staying in the water. Right, so he's unsteady in pretty bad shape to start with. My guess is he'll back off. Yeah, if he can, I can still get another shot off before he moves. That's that initiative bonus I was talking about, allows with a 2. Um, when it goes down to a 1, I'm not sure if it's random which mech goes first. It might be. Um, but this guy will go first, so let's see what else I could do. We destroyed his heavy weapon, and we knocked him. Now, depending on who goes first, you, if he gets to go first, he'll just get right up, which he'll probably will. And there you go. Whether or not he's got anything that can reach me at this point is another story. He might be down to beam weapons, so he might back off or he might charge. We'll see what he does. Oh, looks like he still had another AC on him. Ouch. Yeah. He scratched me. All right, since this is going to take a while to get her over there, I am going to take a shot with her lasers. It's not going to do much damage, but at least let him know that I can see him. Plus, it's guaranteed damage. Oh, look at that. Injured the pilot, took out an arm. So, see, even taking little shots from time to time matter. Now we can missile boat this guy pretty hard. Uh, I do want to maneuver her behind this rock here, which might be the best spot for her to go, but until she gets there, she's got plenty of armor to deal with and plenty of missiles to fire. Especially hitting them on the side flank like that. And goodbye, CT destroyed. Having a bad day. Oh, I saw it, that glitch. All right, so now we got to figure out what else they got. Most likely, whatever else is up there in the same spot. But that gives me a little more time to maneuver my guys back over this way so I can get down into the water and across the other side of the map faster. I'm going to move my atlas up a little bit. Although, like I said, I'm hesitant because I'm in the open here. But I should get another lock on somebody up here, if there is anybody. I got nothing. All right. I'm going to move her up here where I want her. And we're going to have to start moving this way, unfortunately, I think. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get her down. Of course you are. Of course there are reinforcements. Question is, where are they? Let me see. Alright, the enemy reinforcements seem to be coming from the left, where I expected them. Here we go, I got one on target right now. And it looks like the original Lance was only one mech, which is absolutely no problem. So we're going to start getting into position real fast here. We have to adjust my angle. Usually it's about, with this type of difficulty mission, you usually get, 
attacking four mechs at once and then getting hit by four mechs from another direction in general. Right now it seems I'm only getting hit with the one, so we're going to move this guy right into cover and pray there's nothing more on the right hand side now these bars here is your stability this will go back down once you move uh it'll it'll remove the stability a bit off of it um, and if you need to you can also use the brace option uh, which will allow you to uh, stabilize your unit so for example at the bottom here you'll have your your attack your move your sprints um, and these are bonuses that you'll get depending, you know, depending on your skills that you have. Uh, and then you have a precision strike, which allows you to choose your called shots. Uh, vigilance, which allows you to drop down your stability. Uh, plus, you know, it, it stabilizes your unit and increases your uh, initiative by one. And your brace um, does the same thing. You know, it removes the unsteady, it guards them. Uh, um, and it reduces your uh, heat because you're not firing anything is pretty much how it works so now we're going to move over here and take a look i don't know if i'll be able to get a full volley off from this range um, so that might be a risky shot what i'm planning on doing here is seeing if i can get anybody else nobody's going to be in a range unless i do so all right she's at full strength i think she could take a volley from whatever this is hopefully there's not too much back up there so I'm gonna move out so I can at least get eyes on this thing it's a Zeus it's a big one and I can only hit it with my long lasers which are fine I'll let them know I see him and then we'll pull out the missile boat and start unloading on him all right, so it looks like I found his buddies, which is what I was afraid of. I don't want to get hit on a flank like this. And they're over here in this area. I hear ya. Right. So we'll move the crab back in the water, which will uh, allow better heat sinking and give me range on this turkey. It's a tough mech, it can take damage. Looks like he's got some backup over there with a PPC. Now, a PPC can wreck your sensors. Not to mention, these guys all have some pretty hefty lasers, and shooting across the water like this, I don't know if I'll be able to get them in range of my good weapons, so we might have to adjust a few things here. So, we're gonna move up the bull shark because he is in range. Strip some armor off. I'm gonna have to pull her back because she's basically just a metal wall out there right now if I can't reach with my big guns. He's gonna go for cover, of course. He might have pulled out far enough that I can't get a straight shot off on him with all my guns. I can't. Let's see then. We're going to have to start giving him some other targets to look at. He's still in range of my Gauss rifle here. Oh, which never misses until now. Yeah. Head hit, pilot injured, good enough. Basically had enough of these guys. We're gonna start moving down here. And 
need to try to get her in range one way or another. Pull these other idiots up to the side of the mountain. are going to keep pounding that Zeus until I take him out. Another hit like that and you're toast. Might be rabbit. Might be toast. These guys are getting better range because they're on top of a hill. There's not a whole hell of a lot I can do about it. This is a terrible start zone for me. Well, I don't really need to move with this guy. I can hit from here. Ooh, took down the arm there. Injured the pilot, which is good. Maybe one more shot and he might go down. Took a hard hit there. Standing by. I think he's gonna be done at this point. Yep. Almost like he gave up. Alright. Called shot on him on the center torso. We're going to turn off all my lasers here because I'm not going to need that much damage to take this guy. He's done. Center torso hit, destroyed. Even if he was at full strength, he'd be done with the amount of damage that just did. So... So at least one down. Now that's going to force the rest of these mechs up to get visuals. So I'm going to start moving up here if I can. Try to get a visual here enough that I can at least get a missile shot off. It'll put me in a little bit of danger. But at least I'll get the sight on him unless he moves out of my range. As you can see, the missiles really do the damage. You know, the PPCs, the lasers are hit or miss. Uh, if they hit, they're useful. They do reasonable damage, but at long range and these kind of battles, missiles are going to be it. Now, if we were a little closer to the targets, instead of, you know, six feet apart, or, uh, you know, half a mile apart here like this, it would be different. Some heavy mechs here. These Zeus are no joke. And breaching shots are getting to be annoying. All right, back to me. Finally, now I could fire the thumper cannon and probably get two of those guys in one shot, but it doesn't do that much damage against these type of mechs. So from here, I can hit with everything. PPC crit, head hit, pilot injured. I mean, th those LBXs hit hard. They really pound a mech. Ooh, not good. Awesomes have a lot of missiles. Yeah, it is getting stripped off, I know, babe. We got this, though. We got this. Don't worry. Now, at certain points, you'll see, like, if I were to move here, you see how there's a little break. There's a little pinpoint here uh, and a pinpoint here, which means that the target is partially obstructed, and I'll have a lesser chance to hit him. 
However, I wouldn't mind taking a chance to wipe this thing out. Uh, it's a long shot, and I might miss it, and it's going to put her in grave danger. But if I take this out, it could be a game changer. So we're going to try. We have a good chance to hit it. And with my heat sinks and standing in the water, I'm not going to generate that much heat. So I'm firing an alpha at this guy, everything I got. Called shot, as you can see, is 100% if I hit him. And CT destroyed. There it is. Full strength, one volley, done. Fortune favors the bold. So they split their targets up now. So I only got one that can possibly hit either one of these guys. And now this Zeus is moving in, which makes him easy meat. Now the other the other one over here is going to be an issue, but we're not going to worry about him too much. We are trying to take out the one that's damaged right now to cut down the amount of f incoming fire. So now if we take a look at him here, we can see uh, the head's pretty hurt. One more shot could take it out, but chances are going to be very low of me hitting, hitting it. Uh, there are, if there's enough ammo, like this shoulder piece has enough ammo, uh, and I could take a, a called shot on it, and if I hit it, I could blow up the ammo and hope that it takes out the head, that type of thing. Which might be a little risky. I don't know. We could try it. We could try it. I might do enough damage outright, but... Oh, and I don't have a straight angle on that shoulder piece because it's on a different angle than I am. I can only hit the lasers. So, all right, never mind. Just take a straight shot is better off on him. We still hit him with everything, so it might be enough to finish him anyway. Oh, left arm gone. Left torso destroyed. Pilot injured. Right, so this guy's pretty wrecked. Uh, as soon as my missile boat goes, hopefully I can finish him. If we survive this Zeus. I don't need him blowing any parts off. Ouch, 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 ouch. Stop blowing holes in my mech. Right, that hurt a bit. That hurt a little bit. Alright, so now her job is going to be to finish off this Zeus if she can. And I'm really hoping I can make this shot work. Now, this thing is hurt pretty bad. So, it's not a bad idea to split up my shots. Uh, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do a multi-target. To do a multi-target, you pick your multi-target. You select your target A, B, C, however many targets you want. And then you go into your uh, weapons here, and you can change it over to B. So these two missiles will hit this target, and this missile will hit this target. Won't do much damage to him, but it'll start. And I'm hoping that these two will be enough to knock this guy down or take him out outright. So it's crapshoot. We'll see. And there it was. Enough to destroy the center torso. And then my heavier shots go on the other Zeus. We knocked up two pieces of unsteady on him. So I'll move the bull shark up now since he's at full strength. And now we can go to town on stripping down this guy's armor. Oh, I didn't look. I, uh, I There was a, a heat alert on there. I should have paid attention to that. So that will overheat my uh, my mech. He'll wind, up, uh, he'll wind up heating up. So as you can see, that's how it works. Your mech will heat up. You won't be able to move. Your pilot will take a little damage. Um, something you got to pay attention to. Uh, you need to turn off a couple of weapons here and there in order to make it work properly. But crap happens doesn't matter I don't expect this guy to survive yes, now she's pretty hurt but I still think I could take this guy out I still have an excellent chance to shoot even with my senses impaired 
Oh, goodbye, Irene. And that is that, as they say. So it didn't really matter if he overheated or not. It didn't affect the battle whatsoever. And that's it. Always got to be aware of your surroundings. Keep an eye on your heats when you can. And uh, make sure that you uh, turn off weapons from time to time. Um, to keep your heat threshold low enough uh, that you can uh, sink it and still be able to fire the next turn. Uh, you know, we got lucky with that one since the, uh, the mech was wound up uh, not being affected by that. But were I in a, in a shorter battle, that could have been, uh, you know, or a tighter battle, that could have been a little more dangerous. So once you complete a mission, you get your money. It'll show you your kills, who did what, how much damage, what's what's injured, blah, 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 what has to be repaired. Um, generally, armor doesn't matter. It'll just get repaired automatically. Anything that's uh, structured damage like these, uh, it'll take a couple of days in the mech center, depending on how good your uh, mech tech is. Uh, it'll be less time. Once you complete this stage, then you're going to get a load of all the salvage in here, and you get to pick pieces that you want. So I already have two or three, so when I take this, I'll now have a full Annihilator, another one to add to my collection. Um, I could take a couple pieces of Zeus's. As you can see, this is a 6X, uh, 6S and a 6T. Uh, what the difference will be is the hard points. This is 4-beam, 3-missile, 1-short, this is two ballistic, four beam, one missile, one short, so slightly different. Um, and this is also a good place to get the plus plus weapons and the plus plus mods. There's a crap ton of heat sinks and whatnot. A couple of TTS pluses on here. Not a whole lot of things that I don't have at this point, but we will just grab some. Um, and it, it, as a matter of fact, if you don't need the weapons what's a good idea is to take the biggest mech chassis parts even if you don't want them you could sell them uh each one is going to pull you a couple hundred thousand um at this level and then you'll get assigned whatever your contract was so i was i was able to pick the priorities how many you get to pick the totals how many you get uh so i picked three and the other 12 get assigned to me so and this is what i wound up with all together so i still picked up a ppc plus plus and i'm one of those ac 10s um, and they gave me the awesome piece, so, you know, it is what it is. And that covers the entire world of Battletech. Uh, I thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, I hope you've learned a few things about the game. And, uh, you know, get out there and make your own fate. Enjoy.